what we're learning from the cancer genome is that the number of driver mutations present in a particular tumour are vast, potentially, um, rendering you know, the opportunities for combination therapies more limited and less tractable. So what one might ask is fit or sufficiently fit to tackle the constantly evolving cancer genome. I think as human beings, we're too slow to initiate a change of therapy or design a new drug to combat the next driver event that the tumour may, may evolve or, 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 or create. And when one thinks about it through million years of evolution, what is most fit to tackle diversity is the human immune system. It's what it's been, it's what it's been selected for, it's what it's adapted for, it's what it's evolved for over the course of many millions of years of, of evolution of multicellular organisms. Every day, the immune system is tackling new pathogens that the body hasn't seen before. Equally, every day in some patients, the immune system is trying to tackle new mutations that the tumor hasn't seen, that the, the, the host immune system hasn't seen before. And so, so, so that system is fit to tackle the diversity, but it just needs some help. And the help we're seeing through presentations here um, and elsewhere on the international scene are hugely intriguing and exciting, where checkpoint inhibitor therapy is, is clearly demonstrating benefit in patients with melanoma, renal cell carcinoma, we've seen at this meeting, as well as uh, non-small cell lung cancer. And I think we're, we're at the beginning of a very exciting journey where um, the pharmaceutical industry and clinicians are influencing the host immune system to tackle the diversity of the underlying tumour. And it's that interplay between cancer evolution and the immune system that I'm fascinated by in the course of the next few days and hopefully the next few years.